Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's Tone, and we are in North Los Angeles, Ventura, California, and we're going to be checking out Grady's Record Refuge. Let's go inside and check it out. Hey, what's going on, you guys? It's Tone Scott, and I'm back with another episode of Record Store Spotlight. This is Record Store Spotlight episode number six. And as you saw in the intro, we are gonna be visiting North Los Angeles again, Ventura, California. And we're gonna be checking out Grady's Record Refuge. Now, Grady's is a great shop. It's got a great history, great part of the community. But part of that history is actually attached to another record store that was featured in the Record Store Spotlight series early on. Um, as you watch the video, you'll see what I mean. Uh, it's an area that we've visited before, so you should be pretty familiar. But in any case, why don't we check where Grady's is on the map? We've actually featured a couple shops in that area before, so uh, it should be pretty familiar to you guys. And uh, why don't we go ahead and get going and take a point of view look inside, in my opinion, one of the great medium-sized record shops in the North LA area, Grady's Record Refuge. Just check it out. Right away, uh, if we look at, along the back wall here, this is where jazz begins. And I think uh, out of all of the shops in the North Los Angeles area, Grady's probably has the most underrated jazz section because I have pulled some great, great pieces out of here. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know a lot of people that come here for jazz, but they should because he really does have a nice selection. to uh, the soul section. Uh, it's not huge, it's pretty small actually. But again, I have picked up quite a few cool things out of here. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. I think this is a, a recent issue. Yeah, it's a legacy release. Not sure of the year, but it's uh, definitely within the past, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Very cool to have. Same thing with this Prince here. Newer. A lot of picture discs are uh, being pressed lately. And you know, I'm not a, a picture disc person per se, regards to audio, but uh, they are fun to collect. They're very collectible. Like I said, a very small soul and R&B section. And same with rap and hip hop, extremely small, but you know, there's some good stuff. It's mostly new stuff. And since we are in the Ventura, um, Oxnard area of North Los Angeles. Of course, this is our hometown hero, Anderson Pock, the Oxnard album, and there's the Ventura album. And we are in Ventura right now. Rock starts here. This is actually 
the end of rock. So we're going to go back over here. And we are going to start here. Rock starts here on the opposite side of jazz and soul and R&B. And it continues all the way down that way. And I have one thing about Grady's is very similar to um, Record Outlet, which this used to be the Ventura Record Outlet. You remember Record Outlet used was our very first Record Store Spotlight episode. And uh, we talked about Grady in that episode, actually. Um, the pricing is very similar here. Uh, extremely, extremely fair. And um, I mean extremely fair. I mean, you know, it's a $5 Jackson Brown record and The Pretender. This is a fantastic record, and it's, I mean, it's in great shape. And uh, it's five bucks. And uh, it's, it's known for extremely fair pricing. Extremely fair. And of course, a lot of, all of the new releases are mixed in. Like Drake, Pink Moon. Um, all of the new releases, whether they're rock or soul and R&B or whatever, are uh, mixed in with the used. So there's not a separate section per se for new, but uh, there is a healthy offering of both new sealed pressings, you know, again, re-releases or represses or reissues and original pressings so they're just mixed in you just have to look and rock continues on over here and you know the atmosphere is kind of like record outlet in a in a sense that there's uh it's organized but it it it's not uh it's not pristinely organized i mean you know there's things everywhere and i just love that about an older record store love it it's a classical section here towards the back this is the back door of the store here dollar cd section towards the back it's some 78s you don't see it a lot of uh, even used shops or you know they just don't want to bring in 78s but you know there there is a a market for that stuff I love them and rock continues he does have a healthy selection of cassettes it's probably got one of the healthier selections of cassettes in the North Los Angeles area and they span this whole main wall I mean, all the way down to jazz, past jazz, all the way down to the front door. And again, this is rock continuing on. P all the way to the end over here. Right here. Presses of X. This is a good record right here. I love this record. And do we go in this little cross section here? We have some uh, nice, healthy selection of jazz compact discs. Look like original pressings. This is the 60 year anniversary issues. Quite a lot of them. Two little bins of Blue Note on compact disc. And then some miscellaneous jazz CDs in this box. $4 jazz CDs. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And then here's some new arrival stuff. 
right in front of the counter. We have new Jazz arrivals, new regular arrivals, all mixed in. Rock and soul and... and then he has the featured titles section for new vinyl which is really easy it's probably stuff that is more recently released or stuff that they maybe pick out themselves and uh, suggest to customers uh, who are looking for albums that may be repressed or remastered some local punk there's dr l records oh i don't have this one this is cool and cds cds start here not a lot of new compact discs it's the majority of the compact discs that you're going to find here are going to be pre-owned and then over here punk and metal reggae blues some more jazz pre-owned compact discs and soundtracks and then here's a section called creepy dudes let's see creepy dudes who are we gonna find in creepy dudes del reeves lon and derek the dracy brothers never heard of them ah oh, campfire favorites Jack LaForge, promise her anything. Promise her anything. That's kind of creepy. Leon Everett. Ah, oh, and Andy Williams. I've always thought Andy Williams was great up until about this time period, and then he kind of became creepy. Creepy dudes. We'll pass Cosby. I don't. I don't agree. <laughs> Freddie Weller. So creepy dudes. It's the first time I've ever seen a creepy dudes section. It's fantastic. Groovy gals. Who do we have in groovy gals? No Nancy Sinatra? Nancy Sinatra is a straight up groovy chick. I mean, she's groovy. And a little exotica here. And then continuing on over here, some used indie stuff. Reggae. And some more international stuff. Assuming we'll find, let's see what we got. Probably maybe Calypso and Afrobeat and Zamrock and Middle Eastern stuff. Here's Fella Cootie section again. Section again. Fella Cootie section. And then some more African stuff. Old Psychedelic Classics 3. Funky Fuzzy Sounds of West Africa. This is something I might be taking a look at. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you. Oh. This to Lucas, this is actually a good record. He's extremely, extremely, extremely talented. Extremely talented artist. Underrated. And folk right here in the back section here. small folk section and then a comedy section which is a pretty healthy comedy section probably one of the better ones here in the north los angeles area 
more lounge and exotica in there. And some reduced price vinyl in the front and as well as some budget buys on the compact discs here, three, four, 10, etc. There's always a bunch of good stuff, box sets and whatnot up here near the counter. A lot of good stuff. More cassettes. A lot more new stuff coming in here than normal, which is great. Great. I mean, he's got an, an incredible selection of used vinyl but uh, he's balancing it out really well with new stuff all over the place and some info new vinyl releases stuff that's coming in or that's just come in and here's some wall stuff let's check out the wall stuff what do we got on the wall an original Purple Rain with the poster, 40 bucks, pretty good. This is actually a great price. This original New Hope score soundtrack with the poster in it, $25. And it's in fantastic shape, let's take a look. Oh yeah. Almost better than my copy, this is great. It's a pretty good price for that. Fantastic, fantastic score soundtrack. I got the uh, Who sellout, Japanese press, scruffs, some more Japanese presses here. This is fantastic. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too familiar on the price on this one, but this is a great find. Look at this. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Music from the Saint, Roger Moore. And here is the indie section, punk, seven inch singles. You're gonna find a lot of stuff from the Nardcore scene that started in the late 70s, early 80s, right here in Oxnard. We've talked about that before in another episode. Some more electronic gear back here as well. This back row here, easy listening, vocal jazz, things of that nature. And we'll finish up right along this section here, which is blues bluegrass gospel and a lot of country great country selection here you don't find a lot of uh especially in smaller shops you don't find uh, a healthy uh especially new as well uh a country section in uh in southern california you just don't it's just not a place where country is readily desired we'll put it that way but uh this is pretty impressive for a small store. Very nice, very nice. Well, why don't we uh, take a walk over here and uh, have a word with Grady and talk about the shop a bit. And there's the man, Grady. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Yeah, doing? great, great. Right. I always love being here. I always love being here. Thanks. So uh, we've been waiting to do this episode. Uh, the very first episode of Record Store Spotlight that I did was uh, an episode on um, on uh, why am I at a loss for words? Record outlet used. Oh yeah. In Thousand Oaks. Casey. And that's right, Casey. And we were talking about uh, the incarnation of record outlet and how it started and where it went and we know that this used to be 
uh, the second record outlet location that he himself opened. That's right. And he owned it for a little while, and then you came along and he sold it to you. That's right. And you have made this place a huge success. You know, during a time where vinyl kind of went away, it was almost in a time where you took over the store, correct me if I'm wrong, it was almost at a time where, you know, the, the I hate these words, but the resurgence or the big boom of vinyl again really wasn't quite happening when you took over. So you were, oh, all, all, you were almost taking a risk. Yeah, it was a little bit of a risk. There, yeah. There were stores that were, there were more stores closing when I opened. Right. The other way around. Right. And I wasn't really quite sure if I made the right choice actually for a couple of years. But, um, but I had a lot of record experience in my background going back. Into, Personal into, collector? Into the 80s. Yeah, yeah. But, all, but also working retail and distribution. Okay. Mail order going back quite a ways. And right. I felt like I knew it pretty well. And I'd, I'd worked for Casey for a couple of years and kind of right. got the lay of the land here in Ventura and uh, decided to go for it. Right. And um, I'm glad I did. I, yeah. And I, I'm somehow still here almost 20 years. Well, because I, I think a lot of has to do with... You know, there's a lot of record stores. I mean, we live in the greater Los Angeles area. Uh -huh. And in that area, we live in, technically, the uh, record store capital of the world. There's more independent record stores in the entire greater Los Angeles area than there is in any other region anywhere in the world. And you maintain a store that not only I feel and that I hear about that maintains a high level of respect, but you got great stuff. You get great yeah, stuff. Thanks. Yeah. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, who you are. And I, I say that because record stores a lot of times have this stigma that record store people or employees are kind of assholes. Yeah, yeah. That's never been the case with this place. And uh, so I think that's a big part of your success. I, I agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That, that negative stereotype doesn't really help me. It doesn't, it doesn't. So. And so how, how have you been faring for the past couple of years going through what we're going through? Uh, well, it was pretty scary there at first, but actually during, during COVID, vinyl kind of went up another notch. Didn't it? Yeah, and um, so I was really doing well mail order even though I couldn't be open. Right. That's that's where I, I think had a to lot go. of people were. A lot of people were. And then yeah. after a couple of months, two and a half months, I was able to open here again. And it, it kind of continued with the walk in. Right. You know? Right. And um, it just became something that people got into sure. who weren't working as much or home or spending time by themselves and Yeah. Well it's still a comfortable place to come irregardless uh it's just got this atmosphere here that's this is how you want a record store to look <laughs> you just want posters on the wall and you kind of want a little bit of clutter but still organization yeah. and i love coming here for that reason it's just one of those places that uh it's like you know being at your own house yeah <laughs> you well know? in a way it's the posters are kind of modeled after what my bedroom used to look like there you some, go. some of these actually do come from my bedroom oh when is that when right I was a kid yeah wow wow and, uh, and just record stores that i worked at and went to as a kid is kind of right what i always keep in mind so, right yeah. you've owned it since what year since 2003 since 2003 so, so almost my, 20 years almost 20 yeah yeah and so let's shoot for another 20. that'd be great let's shoot for another 20. and so you're also uh, you're on Instagram. Yep. I'll make sure that we put your IG. You're on Facebook. I'm on Facebook, and we we'll, have a website. We'll do too. that too, and we'll put your website up. And you're also doing e-commerce online, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. Discogs, all that stuff. Mostly discogs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. We'll make sure that we, our viewers get to see all that. Excellent. And uh, I appreciate your time. We're just going to keep looking around a bit, okay. and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, yep. kid. All right. All right. And we didn't want to uh, actually take one quick look around. We didn't want to forget Dan. Say, so, hey, Dan. There he is, the man, Dan. All right. And uh, yeah, Grady's Record Refuge, North Los Angeles, Ventura, California. Right here on Main Street. Pretty busy thoroughfare here in Ventura. And that's Grady's Record Refuge. We'll see you guys back in the studio. I absolutely adore that shop. That shop to me is intoxicating. Never get tired of visiting Grady's. And uh, actually I've been visiting that shop before it was Grady's when it was the uh, 
second record outlet opened by uh, Casey Staples, who is, of course, now the owner of the record outlet in uh, Thousand Oaks, California. Um, unlike other record store spotlight episodes um, where we prepare for them, I'll either go in or I'll call a record store that I'm planning to visit and explain what I'm going to be doing. And uh, so we just don't show up and start doing stuff. But uh, I was already in the area for other business that day. So decided that I would just stop in, see if Grady was there, uh, tell him what we wanted to do. And we just kind of did it impromptu. That being said, what I normally like to do after we take a walk through the record store portion of the video, um, I like to show you what I picked up. But because of my timing, uh, I wasn't able to stick around the shop and, 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 and pick up anything. So what I thought I would do instead is I went into the collection and I pulled out about two or three things that I had picked up from Grady's in the past. And I thought I'd show you guys, you know, what I had uh, been able to get from him before, previously. Uh, one of the first things I wanted to show is this Devo Live record. Um, I have, it's not something that's totally scarce. But I haven't seen this record maybe less than five times in the past 10 to 15 years in store. It's not the most common thing that you find. It's not an expensive record, but again, it's not uh, something that is prevalent. This is a 1980 pressing on Warner Brothers Records. It is a fantastic live record. It came with just a cover slip and a, um, a sleeve, a plastic sleeve, and the record, and that is it. Um, it's a great live album. I wouldn't put it in my top five live albums of all time. Me personally being a huge proponent and aficionado of live records. Um, I don't even know if it would make my top 10, but it's definitely a great record. I don't play it enough. Uh, probably be played after this, but uh, it's definitely a great listen and I'm happy I picked it up. I definitely got that from Grady's maybe about uh, 10 years ago or so. Another album that I picked up is another live album. And I remember I picked this up because I was looking for a replacement, uh, something that was in, in a better condition than the one that I had at the time. And that is uh, Paul McCartney and Wings, Wings Over America. This is their, I think 1974 or 75, um, 76, uh, three LP set live album. Uh, where he toured over America, and it's a compilation of many live performances throughout that tour. Um, one of my favorite live albums, and it makes my, definitely makes my top five live albums of all time. Uh, this thing is immaculate. The vinyl is absolutely pristine. The cover is fantastic. It's totally complete, and I remember finding this at Grady's um, because I had been consciously in search of replacing the copy that I had that was kind of old and beat up. This is beautiful. I play this quite often. One of my favorite live albums of all time. I definitely remember picking that up from Grady. Uh, the last thing, which is actually one of the more recent things I picked up, um, is the debut from Wishbone Ash. Uh, this thing is in fantastic condition. I had had uh, everything by Wishbone Ash. Um, except this. And uh, maybe about oh, less than a year ago, I was in store and I was able to find a beautiful copy of the debut self-titled Wishbone Ash record. And uh, it's just a great record. It's on DECA, 1970. I think this is a 1970 pressing, 1970, 1971. It's right around there, early 70s. And uh, it's... A great record. The cover is in way better than VG Plus condition and the vinyl is immaculate. It's totally complete with the inner sleeve and uh, this was definitely the last thing I picked up from Grady's. This was a great score. It wasn't cheap, it wasn't super expensive, but in this condition, you know, I shelled out a few bucks for it. And uh, these are some of the things that you can find at Grady's Record Refuge. So um, I appreciate you guys uh, taking a look at everything hanging with me through this episode of Record Store Spotlight and uh, look forward to the next one. I really appreciate it, you guys. And as always, take care. God bless. And um, that's about it. I'll see you guys soon.
Peace.